Hey, Coaster Nation. I'm Dan Howard, and I'm here at Kings Island. Today, I'm with Don Helbig. He is the director of communications, or PR manager for the park. The man of many titles. We'll just call him the man right now. <laughs> So for a guest that's never been to Kings Island before, what are your top three picks that they should see or do while they're visiting the park? I think it starts with the Beast. It's the world's longest wooden roller coaster. You have to ride it twice. You have to ride it during the day and then also come back and ride it at night. Totally different experience at night. Uh, number two, I would take advantage of the different deals that are available online on our website. You're going to substantially save money if you buy your tickets in advance online. You take advantage of the different meal deals, the all-day drink bottle. So I would definitely take advantage of that. And then also t take in some of our live shows. I think that's one of the most underrated parts of Kings Island. Everybody can see the rides and attractions that you have on your website. But our shows are pretty spectacular too, especially Origins. It's a Cirque Experience show in the Kings Island Theater. I know one of our favorite things to do while we're here at Kings Island at night is to watch the fireworks from the Eiffel Tower, which is right over there. You really do get a spectacular 360 view of the entire park. So over the years, I noticed there's a lot of uh, elements and theming elements within the coasters and around the coasters, such as flight deck, and the big giant jet, and things of that nature. What happens to those elements you know, when they're gone? Where, what do you do with them? Well, some of the items, they get auctioned off at the end of the year. We have a full-time uh, party at the end of the season, and we do it for charity, and a lot of those items are available during that. Uh, some of them also remain in our sign shop, so they're still here on property. And then sometimes we have them elsewhere in the park. We have a thing that's called the Boneyard, which has a lot of old, old memorabilia back there from the different rides and attractions that have been here through the years. So for the most part, it stays here or gets auctioned off. Is there ever a time when you bring out a piece, say, during haunt season or something like that, where you place it throughout the park and just don't say anything about it and just kind of see if anybody notices? Do you ever do things like that? Well, absolutely. There's a lot of different things that come out during Halloween haunt that, uh, you know, former pieces of rides and attractions. We do try to see how many of our guests are going to figure out what these things are. We've had different memorabilia from Son of Beast and some of the other rides that uh, are no longer with us. And it's fun for our guests, too, because it brings back a lot of memories when they see these pieces. So all the enthusiasts out there are all asking about the new coaster next year. What's the name of this coaster going to be, and where is it going to be located? Well, that's kind of a little bit of an off-the-wall question, I think. But, uh, you know, I think everybody goes through Rivertown. They see that there's a wall up, and, you know, the speculation runs rampant. But, uh, you know, it wouldn't be a bad idea to keep following us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and, uh, you know, maybe see what we're doing a little later on this summer. Yeah, the wall that our guests see in Rivertown, you know, when we removed the funnel cake, opened up a lot of space right there. So uh, it's keeping all of our guests on this side of the park so they're not walking out onto the train tracks or underneath Race for Your Life, Charlie Brown. For more information about Kings Island, visit our website, visitkingsisland.com. This video is brought to you by Design by Alley. For all your graphics, web design, and photography needs, go to designbyalley.com.